Thank you very much, Malik. Uh, you're very kind. Um, I kind of feel like Bono in his prime with this little mic here. Um, so um, I, I've uh, watched a few of these TED Talks online. This is uh, my first TED Talk, possibly my last. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to try and be uh, uh, compelling, uh, coherent, and uh, charismatic. Although I can't really make any promises to that effect because following on from Sam's comments earlier, I did spend most of my journey up playing uh, Candy Crush and eating cake on the train. So uh, it is a great privilege to be here with you uh, this afternoon. And congratulations to Malik for keeping the show on the road today under different difficult circumstances. I'm going to invite everybody just to give a modest little round of applause just in case we forget at the end. Well done, Malik. And following on from, let's face it, what was a genuinely inspiring and fascinating presentation that we've just seen, um, I'm going to talk about trade. So we're going to move on from the exploration of space and the oceans, life in the future, technology, to trade. And actually, in particular, a little bit of trade policy. So I can see already the, uh, the electricity that is sweeping the room before me. I can see that people really can't wait to hear what Britain can do to boost exports and international trade now that we've left the European Union. Right. Here's a bit of good news. Um, I'm not going to uh, dwell on the subject of Brexit. I am not, right? I want to go a bit deeper. I want to consider a few fundamentals about what the UK can do to boost exports and increase international trade. And the big assumption, of course, I'm going to make behind that is that uh, exports are a good thing. Exporting as a country or an economy helps us drive wealth. And the more international trade we have, the more opportunity there is to export. So increasing exports and increasing international trade is a good thing. That's my big uh, which, uh, assumption for the afternoon. And of course, that formally was not a particularly controversial um, assumption, but let's see how things pan out in the weeks and months ahead. Now, exports. Very important that uh, we grow exports. So let's just confront one fundamental fact, however, from the perspective of the United Kingdom. I'm afraid to say that we don't export enough, right? So in 2018, the UK had a trade deficit of 27 billion pounds, right? By importing more than we export. If you take into account other financial flows, see, I can see everybody's really fascinated already, got you on the hook there, right? If we take into account other financial flows, and then we get something called the current account uh, uh, deficit, um, our deficit ballooned to £93 billion, pounds, right? Now, by contrast, Germany, and I've already met one gentleman singing happy birthday this afternoon in the toilets from Bavaria, I think. Um, Germany recorded a current account surplus of 230 billion pounds. Now, a lot of folks, a lot of economists out there might not worry too much about this. They might find comfort in esoteric, which is my favorite word at the moment, esoteric economic theory, and uh, say it doesn't really matter. But I will still come back to one fundamental point. The bottom line is, when you have that kind of deficit, you've got to borrow money from other folks, right? Or you've got to sell stuff to pay for it. And that is not a position of power, and it's certainly not a position of taking back control. Now, it's fair to say that uh, Her Majesty's government does recognise that this is something we might want to address, and hence um, we hear a lot of rhetoric about unleashing Britain's potential, you know, which is deeply moving. Again, I can see the electricity, the vibrancy. People are punching the air on that. It's fantastic. Sit down, sir. Right. So, so... So we, the government does recognise this as an issue. And it is something we want to address. But then the next question is, well, what is the government doing about it? So let's journey back and look what the last government did, right? So the UK has an export strategy, okay? Which is very exciting. Thrilling title, Export Strategy 2018. In that strategy, they say, we want to increase exports from 30% of UK economic output 
to 35%. Immediately, people gripped, right? Now, I'm going to ask you a question. That's our goal. What's the deadline? I want to hear guesses. I want to hear people give me some answers on that. What's the deadline for achieving this objective, everybody? 2030. Nice guess. Who else? Next guess. We could go on for ages, actually. We could go on for yonks, but people would get bored. And I'd have to tell you the truth, there is no deadline, right? There's a goal, there is no deadline. Marvellous, right? Or should I say, pretty pointless, actually. And as an objective is concerned, it's less ambitious than the objective that we had in 2012, which was to double exports by 2020. Now, whatever you think of objectives, at least that's something tangible and that you can sort of get behind and get your head around. So we have this sort of rather opaque objective. Now, why do we end up in that sort of situation? Well, of course, it's because politicians and policymakers and civil servants over time, they become a little bit risk averse. When you have targets, the risk is that you're going to be vulnerable to cheap politicking, criticism and all the rest of it. Not a good place to be. So they become risk averse and they drift towards nebulous goals. And that means there's also a tendency towards homeopathic remedies. By that I mean little tinkery little actions. Tinkering when it's transformation that's needed. And to illustrate that point in a really compelling way, um, I will just talk to the uh, UK's uh, productivity gap. One of the reasons we don't export enough is that we're not as productive. And one of the reasons for that is that we don't invest as much as other economies on uh, research and development, okay? We invest as a proportion of our economic output, in fact, about half of our dear friends in Germany. So about 1.6% compared to around 3.04%, right? Two decimal places there, well done, David. Somebody's gonna pick me up on that, I've probably got it wrong. Anyway, I didn't actually. Now, so big gap there, big issue to address. What is the UK government's response? Well, a central plank of the response is to increase tax credits, or the last government's response, I should say, was to increase tax, tax credits for research and development from 11% to, anyone? 12%. <laughs> Whoa. The electricity actually is diminishing substantially. I can sense it. So, pretty modest. A little tinkering. I mean, after all, you know, if, you, if you're worried about being held to account for stuff, and if things go wrong, well, you probably just want to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, not too much, because if things do go wrong, then you're not going to get into too much trouble. Not a good place to be, okay? Now, moving on from homeopathic remedies. This is a shoe. Now, what I'm moving on to now is from commentary on the broad position of the UK in terms of boosting economic um, activity, boosting export, exports, sorry, to that broader piece about what can we do to boost international trade. And I'm not going to dwell upon alignment, non-alignment, in customs union, out of customs union, free trade deal, Canada, uh, no deal, all of that stuff. Going to again try and touch a little bit on some of the fundamentals. And one of those fundamentals is complexity. Hence, we have the diagram of a shoe. And to be precise, and let's be precise about it, a shoe apparently made mostly of textile. Let's go on. This is a shoe apparently made mostly of leather. Now, these diagrams you see are extracted from the 3,722-word guidance that the government has for exporting and importing footwear, right? They reflect the phenomenal detail and complexity of international trade as it is presently constructed, the legal and technical and bureaucratic architecture around that. This is one of my favorite bits. Don't bother reading it all, but in that guidance there, they reference, they talk about exceptions, and it is good to know, is it not, that tights, Socks and stockings are not footwear for the purposes of international trade. Simple proposition. I would tend towards promoting simplicity when it comes to our international trading system. Some folks are slightly averse to that, but the bottom line is, 
I mean, none of this, don't get me wrong, the way things happen at the moment is, is a showstopper. There's plenty of trade going on, but it's not advantageous. It doesn't encourage trade by making things so complicated. So let's try and push for a little bit of simplicity. This is a unicorn, right? Now, in all the jolly good fun and talking about Brexit forever and ever and ever, there was lots of references to unicorns for those that you were paying attention. Um, and the reference that people talked about unicorns as, oh, there's no technology solutions for frictionless borders and all the rest of it. It's all impossible and so forth. But the fact is, the news that we can all celebrate later on as we mill around Glasgow city centre, um, wine bars and all the rest of it, probably not, I don't know. Um, the good news is, is that the technology does exist, right? right? There is technology available to enable frictionless trade and avoid checks at borders. This is a little bit of a picture of something uh, invented by a company called Physical to Digital, which is trialling this technology on behalf of a major UK retailer right now to avoid the problem of checks at borders that many of us have heard so much about. And there's another fascinating uh, uh, map of this system or picture of this uh, system in action. The bottom line is embracing technology even within the system and the constraints we have with all its complexity, technology can be a solution and make things simpler. This is a car, right? I'm afraid to say, this could be a controversial example, but we'll see. A car manufactured by a Jaguar Land Rover. It's a beautiful vehicle. And uh, this could be controversial, but I'm going to ask you to spot the difference with this car. And if anybody says the other one's red, it'll be irritating, right? So can anybody spot the difference? Right, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. There's not very much difference, okay? And I'm not gonna go into details, but it was manufactured by not JLR, okay? Right, and it's a consequence of international trade. And folks will tell you actually, frankly, if we're gonna promote international trade, everybody's gotta really respect the rules, and that includes intellectual property. And the reason why that's so important, if we take the view that the more we trade with one another, the more that we all become more prosperous over time, we need to have trust. And when, you, when that trust decays, people don't trust each other, trade disputes arise, trade wars arise, and at the end of the day, that's in nobody's interests. So, respect the rules. Now, thrilling conclusion for you all. How can we boost UK exports how can we increase international trade? So the first point is, right, goal, right? We need a meaningful goal. That, everything arises from the goal and the goal that you set yourself, probably in every, anything in life, actually, right? Let's get rid of the trade deficit. Let's get rid of the current account deficit. And, you know, what? not by whenever, but by a fixed deadline, right? And secondly, from the UK perspective, these points may apply elsewhere, Let's uh, try and avoid the tendency to tinker and let's try and transform when transformation's needed. It's not an easy thing to do, might require some evolution, the maturity of our political discourse, but that is something that is necessary. And lastly, from that broader trade piece, that wider objective of growing the size of the cake, international trade, I think the UK government should promote an international agenda, multilateral agenda for trade that is founded on those three things that I just covered up there, okay? Promoting simplicity, embracing technology, and respecting the rules. And I think it's an agenda that if every country embraces that, every country will benefit from. Thank you very much, everybody.